that continues. First, with General Manager and Head of Soccer Operations, Yael Abramish West. And we would also like to thank the person who took all of the pieces that she put together and put them in motion last year, uh, Head Coach Juan Carlos Amoros. Yeah, first, uh, as well as Yael yeah, just did, I would like to thank you all for coming. I think it's a fantastic event organized by the club. It really shows uh, how much the women's game is growing in America, how much New Year's in New York or FAM is doing for it as well. So it's fantastic uh, to be here. And when it comes to last year, obviously, my vision is always a, a bit different because I am I'm the coach. So, you know, those two goals that we were looking at the, uh, right now in the final, they were just the, the icing on, on the cake for a fantastic season that started on, I would say, the 1st of November or 31st of, 30th of October when I came over and, and I met Yael at the Red Bull training ground in a very different presentation to, to this one, uh, <laughs> definitely. Uh, and we started to work together. Uh, for me, you know, from the beginning, the support they had towards me, then to the staff that I proposed we needed to bring, how they, the, the ownership, herself, and the rest of the managing team were supporting the, the people that work in the day-to-day -day basis, which is not only the coaching team, the medical team, the high performance, you know, like the, the logistics, operations, there's a lot of people that works behind the players to make sure that they can be successful. And <clears throat> from day one, we. We knew that we could build something special that we was going to take a lot of a lot of effort, and the players were, uh, for me, the, the main characters during the year from day one. Uh, they were into what we were trying to do. It was very different to maybe a lot of the things that they've done in the past. And we had a lot of up and downs, but we always talk internally about trying to win every day, and there was a lot of wins throughout the year, not only on the pitch but off the pitch, with you know special moments on the. You know, on the football side and on the personal side, which for us is very important, and step by step we grow that style, we grow that um, that group of players, that team that that was able to to do better and better. Uh, I would say every month and and, and go to the playoffs. Uh, we can't forget that we finished six. Uh, and we had a very very tough run, but we always said that the team, yeah, Gotham, New Jersey, New York, when the things are the hardest, and we know with history is when. Uh, we step it up the, the highest, and that's what we did, and that's what we finished with the championship. And now being able to to assemble the team, I think a lot of people thought we were celebrating when we were winning. We did a bit of celebrating, but we did a lot of work to make sure that these players uh, and Jelly's done fantastically well with a lot of people behind the scenes to make sure that we could make the team stronger. That's our idea. We want to be better, uh, but at the moment, and, and I'm telling you, that's how we work. We're not looking at you know, winning the championship this year, we are at the moment making sure that the 29th of uh, January, when the players stand up there, they feel special, they feel that they are ready, and we start working for, because for us every day matters. So that's what we call it. A place where there is passion, our people need to earn their, their place. And for me, when I look at different places that could have different process of adaptations, I think uh, for them will be easier. Than for example, Estelle, I came in the middle of the summer with a low level of injuries coming from a different league. You know, those things are the things on the football side that we look when we look into adaptation. And there is no doubt that we want to be, we want to have the best players from, from America. We want to have the, the best players from the New York, New Jersey area. And we want to have the best players in the world. And, and some of them tick the three categories, some of them tick two of those, so it's definitely something that that we praise ourselves and that we believe uh, the adaptation uh, shouldn't be a, a problem on this case. One really important piece of our development as a club is our consideration of the desirability for players to play here. And so we have goals in terms of where we finish in the table and we also have a metric that we actually ask the players at the end of the season, would you recommend Gotham to friends in the league? And so I did have a good sense based on our results on that simple survey question that in their off seasons, they are talking to their friends and they're saying, you know, this is a good place to play. I got better this year. I enjoyed the culture. I enjoyed winning. I enjoyed being part of the group. And in that sense, I did feel pretty confident, honestly, that whichever free agents we spoke to, we had a very good chance of bringing to the club. And in our conversations with 
the free agents um, individually, and you know there were players we talked to outside of this group as well, we always started the conversation with asking them what they're looking for in their next phase of their career. And I can tell you if a player said something like, oh, well, I want to live by the beach, or I want certain things, like we know it's not, it's not us. And every single player who we brought to the club said something similar, and they said, I want to win, I, I want to get better, I don't feel like I've met my potential, and I want to be around other people who share that mindset. And the second they said any, any version of that, I felt pretty confident, I knew that they should choose Gotham. And so, you know, we had many, many conversations and long conversations, but that did give me a good deal of confidence. I knew, you know, our coaches can provide that type of environment. So it was, um, I feel very honored and very grateful that they did select Gotham, and I'd say, uh, if you told me this a year ago, I might, <laughs> might laugh at you, but certainly based on how last season went and our conversations, I felt pretty confident that, um, that these players would want to come to the club. Uh, World Cup champions, all Olympians. Um, and let's just take a look at some of them now. champion, two-time Olympian, three-time NWSL champion, three-time NWSL Shield leader, and NWSL MVP. She has signed a multi-year contract through 2026. Next, we have Tierna Davidson, a defender, 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup champion, U.S. Women's National Team defender, Tierna Davidson. Up next, Rose Lavelle, a U.S. Women's National Team midfielder, Olympian, FIFA Women's World Cup champion. And Emily Sonnet, also a U.S. Women's National Team midfielder, Olympian, FIFA Women's World Cup champion, and two-time NWSL champion. So as you can see, we didn't sign one or two, but four incredible players to kick off 2024. Yeah, um, hi everybody. Thank you guys for being here um, and welcoming us all. Um, yeah, to me, you know, family's everything. Um, I have a beautiful son. Uh, I am very much uh, driven by family. I think it's, it's my biggest motivator, it's my purpose. Um, so coming home and having this opportunity to play for Gotham FC is, um, an exceptional um, opportunity to have all my worlds come together to